Hello and welcome to part two of a two-part webinar series on how to maintain productivity and wellness while aging on the farm. My name is Bailey Kashatka and I'm going to be facilitating today's webinar titled Practical Solutions to Maintain Productivity and Wellness. Before I begin, I would like to recognize my team members who have been a part of this project. Myself, Rachel, and Andrea are occupational therapy students at the University of Minnesota. Tamara Voss Draper is one of our professors at the university who has co-facilitated this project with Maria Service. Maria is the owner of Grounded Evolution that offers occupational therapy services. Rachel shared part one of this webinar on how occupational therapy can be your productivity and wellness advisor. If you haven't already listened to part one, I highly encourage you to do, to do so to learn the relationship between identity and wellness as a farmer and how occupational therapy can increase your productivity and wellness to remain staying active on the farm. This webinar series is a partnership program between the University of Minnesota and the Upper Midwest Agricultural Safety and Health Center. Here's an overview of today's webinar. I am excited to share with you as I grew up in a small rural town and currently live in one as well. My best friend grew up showing cattle and working on the farm and I never hesitated to join her. The early mornings of milking followed by mucking the barns and playing with the calves was always a fun time. Further, my family owns a wildlife educational park where animal pens were my childhood playground growing up, cleaning and feeding all types of animals from farm animals to wolves and elks, you name it. With my personal experience with farming and occupational therapy background, I'm honored to share today's webinar. I will start by explaining what assistive technology is and how it may assist you on the farm. Then I will go into detail on solutions for the most common age-related problems. I'll talk about low vision, hearing loss, aches and pains, and arthritis. I will also share tools to assist with memory and general safety tips for inside your home and on the farm. Lastly, I will share resources for you to explore at the conclusion of this webinar. I would like to read this quote from a former mentor, Peg Gerard. Being independent does not mean doing everything yourself. It means doing what you do well and getting assistance for everything else that keeps you independent. I found this quote fitting as we all have strengths, but we also have areas of improvement. And in those areas of improvement, we may need strategies and tools to use so we can continue doing what we love, as in this case, staying on the farm and being a farmer. So what is assistive technology and how can it help? As you may know, our society has made technological advancements through the years. In the past, farming was done with the use of animals, oxes, and horses. And farming has evolved from the use of more physical labor, from the use of more physical labor and using animals to now having tractors and machinery to do the work for us. This has enabled farming to become more efficient. We now have those tractors to plow the fields and milking parlors so farmers don't have to milk by hand anymore. I like to use this analogy to de demonstrate how assistive technology can have a vital role in your life and on the farm. Assistive technology is any item, piece of equipment, or product system, whether acquired commercially off the shelf, modified or custom made, to increase, maintain, or improve functional capabilities of individuals with disabilities or in simple terms, one's ability to carry out tasks despite limitations or impairments. Using assistive technology can improve your ability to perform farming duties, maintain or increase your independence, overcome the natural aging process, and even protect your body and, and your health. Assistive technology can enable you to stay active on the farm and continue your role. Through this webinar, I will share a few practical strategies and assistive technology solutions. And in the resource slide is a link to a handout to where you can locate these items. And today, I hope you may find at least one thing that may benefit you or someone you may know. We will start by addressing low vision. Low vision is common with aging and makes simple everyday tasks more challenging. On the farm, vision is needed for a variety of tasks such as reading vaccine labels, the directions, syringes, testing milk, reading um, and feed those feeding instructions, even reading the time and in the home and taking your medication. 
One has to be able to read those directions to ensure that the, you are taking your medication correctly and testing them out properly. The three most common vision problems include macular degeneration, glaucoma, and cataracts. On the right is a photo, um, on the left, excuse me, is a photo of what someone with macular degeneration may see. It causes blurred or reduced central vision. Individuals have difficulty viewing things in their direct line of sight. In the middle is what an individual with glaucoma may see. Glaucoma is when your peripheral vision starts to deteriorate, making it challenging to see things directly in your line of sight, kind of like having tunnel vision. This can pose safety risks when having limited view of your surroundings. Lastly on the right is what an individual with cataracts may see, and this is clouding in the clear lens of your eye. Things become blurry, making it hard to view things clearly. All three of these common eye problems, along with having poor eyesight in general, can make farming tasks difficult and cause safety risk. Next, I'll share about solutions and strategies to overcome low vision. The first one is to increase task lighting. And what I mean by this is to increase the lighting within your environment. And the placement of the light matters. Increased lighting can enable you to see things more clearly. The photo on the left demonstrates this, the importance of lighting placement. The light is slightly placed in front of the person for the stream of the light to cover the whole workspace versus the light being directly over the person when majority of the light is behind the person, which is no good. There are a number of different ways to increase lighting in your home and on the farm. One of the ways is using the un, using under the cabinet lights that attach, attach underneath surfaces or items to have more lighting on your workspace, such as the kitchen counters, the workbench in the barn, and it may be handy in the feed room for you to better be able to see how much feed is left. There are also battery, oper battery oper operated ones for placement that is not by an outlet. Another option is having accessible flashlights or battery operated lights. This one on the screen can be stood up to free up your hands when, when both hands are needed, such as working on machinery. Another option when having to work with both hands are these LED light gloves. These would be useful when having to work with your hands in small spaces and light is not easily accessible. For example, working under machinery or under the sink, electrical room, or even having to give shots to the animals. The photo on the right is an example of a higher technology tool called the pen scanner. This pen reads aloud the text for those with reading difficulty. Prices vary depending on the type of pen scanner and the store, of course. However, one with a USB cord can be found on Amazon for $90, while a wireless one can be found for $140. This pen would be useful for reading medication labels and those vaccine bottles. On this slide are additional solutions. On the left are two types of magnifiers. These are useful for enlarging text or an object to see more clearly. There are different sizes depending on how big of a magnifier you need or want. You can get one that fits into your pocket to carry around with you and one that has a light on it. As I mentioned prior, the benefits of increased lighting. With farming and owning animals, animals, there can be a lot of important dates to remember and keep track of. Calendars are great for planning and organizing your time, but are not of great use if you have difficulty viewing them. In the middle is an example of a large print calendar that would enable those with those low vision to remember those important dates. Having low vision can make it challenging to view your environment. There therefore pose a safety risk from walking around the barn and using machinery. Bright colored duct tape or reflective tape can increase one's ability to view edges while walking around the farm and to signify dangerous areas, such as the steps in the milking parlor or sharp, sharp edges on the fences or on the barn. This is a strategy to use to prevent injuries and falls. Specific strategies for individuals with macular degeneration and glaucoma include eccentric viewing and scanning training. Eccentric viewing is a strategy to use to overcome macular degeneration. Again, this is when your central vision starts to deteriorate, making things in your direct line of sight hard to see. Eccentric viewing is altering, altering your line of sight to see an object. For example, in the left photo, there is a leaf 
a person with macular degeneration, would adjust their line of sight by looking to the right, the left, or up or down, and then instead of looking right at the leaf. This will help make the image be more visible. Next, scanning training is useful for individuals with glaucoma. Scanning training involves distinguishing landmarks in common environments, such as the cattle barn in the photo to the right, and using landmarks to scan the area around you to become more aware of your surroundings. As in the photo, one would start by locating the left arrow, then turning your head to the right until you see the right arrow. This enables you to become aware of safety hazards to help navigate that area more safely. Hearing is the next area I will discuss. Hearing is important on the farm and there are many situations that you may damage your hearing, such as sorting animals in the barn, which can be very loud, and the milking parlor, for example. On the other hand, those hard of hearing may have difficulty communicating information to the vet or making appointments with the shearer. Additionally, it may be difficult to listen to the weather, as we all know is vital in the agricultural world. It's important to know when it's going to rain, especially if it's hay season. There are three ways to address hearing solutions. Strategies to reduce sound and prevent further hearing loss, ways to amplify sound, and ways to compensate for hearing loss. Here on the left are two options to prevent hearing loss. There are noise canceling earmuffs, earmuffs, which reduce ambient noises. I have used these during situations where there are periodically loud bangs. They allow me to hear those talking around me, but for lo the loud noise is reduced. These would be great for when you're sorting animals or riding on lo loud machinery. You can find these on Amazon as low as $50. Relative lower price item to prevent hearing loss is wearing the typical earplugs. And on the right is a photo of a pocket talker. This amplifies sound and is similar to hearing aids, but it's a less expensive solution for those who need sound amplified. It clips onto your clothing and has an earpiece that goes into the ear to relay the sound around you. On the, this slide are ways to compensate for reduced hearing. Extended mirrors on tractors can increase your awareness of your surroundings and safety hazards while operating machinery. And the big circle mirror, mirrors you see in the stores to prevent theft can be placed throughout the farm to prevent injuries. One suggestion is in the barn where you may sort animals. Placing them in a corner up by the ceiling would allow you to see if an animal is approaching you from behind. Lastly, on the right is a light vibrating sounding paging system. This is designed to allow those with or without hearing loss to instantly alert and stay in contact with another person. Pressing a button on one pager activates a bright strobe pulsating vibrator and an audible alarm to the second pager. This would increase your safety and allow you to notify or be notified from another during dangerous task on the farm. Aches and pains may be something you're familiar with, Everyone experiences aches and pains at some point in their life. I know my body aches after a long day on my feet taking care of animals. The photos on the, slide show, on the slide show several activities that may cause our bodies to become stiff or experience pain. Bending down, weeding the garden or the field, sitting on the tractor seat for several hours, enduring bumpy fields, or lifting and moving hay bales. I remember this and continue doing it today and it takes a toll on me. With aches and pains, simple tasks such as tying our shoes and getting up in the morning become more difficult. The following slides and solutions are strategies to prevent injuries, protect your body and increase task efficiency. First, I will focus on inside the home. One solution is to rearrange your environment. This can reduce repetitive, repetitive movements, such as twisting and bending that may aggravate the back, neck, or shoulders, or any other area that you experience pain. The photos are examples of how one may arrange their kitchen to have commonly used items more accessible. This reduces the need to reach up into cupboards or bend down into those cabinets to ground, grab common items. 
The strategy can be used out in the barn as well as in your closet or the bathroom. On the right is a solution to make rugs more secure. Throw rugs can be a fall hazards as they are easy to trip over. Installing a non-slip rug pad or double-sided carpet tape for rugs is recommended. The other area in the house is a bathroom where modifications can be made to protect your body and prevent falls. First is using an anti-slip mat or putting down an anti-slip tape in slippery areas as in the shower, even outside the shower. A little slip or becoming off balance can increase pain in certain areas. The use of grab bars are essential in bathrooms for something to hang on to, getting out of the shower, drying off, changing clothes, or sitting or rising from the toilet seat. They can help you keep your balance. They can help support you when you're moving and especially when you're experiencing pain. So where else would grab bars be useful in your home or out on the farm? Areas that I think of is in the entryway when needing to take off your boots or in the closet when you're changing or even in the barn. The next two photos are more equipment that may become handy when it hurts to stand up for long periods of time or when needing to sit down. Taking a shower can be physically demanding and fatiguing, especially if you, you experience pain. A shower bench, bench or chair may be beneficial to conserve your energy or increase your safety and stability. Further toilet seats can be low to the ground, making it difficult to use the bathroom. A raised toilet seat can help make sitting on the toilet easier and prevent further pain, as well as standing up. The one on the photo has safety frames to grab onto, but there are many different variations. There's even a toilet platform to raise the whole toilet up. And it is recommended to consult an occupational therapist to determine what equipment in the bathroom would be best for you. And as you continue and think about what home modifications or assistive technology devices that you may need, it is best to be proactive and to plan ahead by installing these now and getting them, getting used to them for when you may need them down the road. Throughout our day, we do a lot of bending, carrying, walking, which all puts a lot of stress and strain on our bodies. Proper body mechanics can protect our body and reduce the strain. On the left is a photo demonstrating the safest way to lift an item. You may want to bend at your knees and not your back and use your legs to lift up. And make sure to hold items close to you as the farther you hold it away, the more weight and the more stress it puts on your body. On the right demonstrates a safe way to transfer an item from one spot to another. Instead of twisting our torso, you want to pivot with your feet. And the next photo is a man carrying two bags. On the farm, you may carry five gallon buckets. And I know it's hard for me to carry just one of them and it hurts my one side because I'm off balance. It's recommended to even out that weight and carry one in each hand if you're able. This balances that weight out throughout your body. The last photo shows the safest way to reach for an item in a bin. In the barn, this may be the feed bin, scooping out feed. Instead of bending at your waist, reach with one hand and kick the opposite leg out. This will take some stress off your lower back. Proper bo body mechanics can reduce the load off your body and reduce that wear and tear over time. Further talking about protecting our bodies, I want to mention the importance of stretching. All the physical labor we're farming can take a toll on your body and you may become stiff, which leads to that aches and pains. Stretching in the morning is beneficial, along with stretching before strenuous activity. Here are three simple stretches you can do, targeting the most common body parts that become stiff. The left demonstrates two back stretches while sitting in a chair. In the middle is a shoulder stretch you can repeat on each arm. And on the right is a simple neck stretch of bending and holding your neck to each side. It's recommended to slowly work up to holding these stretches for at least 30 seconds and doing them multiple times a day. Try to see if you can incorporate them into your daily routine 
such as your morning routine when you wake up, the lunchtime, and even before bed. Proper body mechanics even includes our sleeping position. position. We can give our bodies proper support and reduce the risk of back and neck pain when sleeping by having quality mattresses and pillows. On the left or in the middle is a photo of how pillows can be used to support your body. On your side, when you lay down, you can add a pillow between your knees. And when you're on your back, add a pillow underneath your knees. Maybe you'd like to try this tonight and see how you feel when you wake up. Our feet deserve some attention for supporting our bodies every day. Long days on the farm mean long days on your feet. It is important to ensure you have good work boots to support your feet. Work boots, whether they be the steel-toed boots, rubber boots, cowboy boots, and the popular brand of muck boots. These can all be difficult to take off and even harder when you have pain. If you experience aches and pains, even tying your shoes can be aggravating. There are elastic laces you can change out your lace of boots with. Further, there's a tool called the boot jack shown in the middle picture that can assist you with taking off your boots. These are simple solutions that can decrease time while bending to put on or take off your boots. Also adding a gram bar, like I mentioned before in your entryway or space that you take your boots on and off can help keep you balanced during this task and prevent a fall. I also recommend adding to a bench to sit down. The anti-slip anti tape I mentioned previously can be used in other spaces throughout the farm. The milking parlor and barn floors can become slippery and adding this tape can help prevent slips and falls. In the middle is an anti-fatigue mat to support your body while standing for extended periods of time. You may place one in the workshop or the milking parlor. The kitchen sink is a great location as well. There are a variety of tasks that require you to be on your knees. That is another place that can cause aches and pains, such as fixing equipment or weeding the garden that long time on your knees can take a toll. These fluid filled gel and knee pads can protect your knee joints and prevent those aches and pains. The last thing I will mention about aches and pains is how to conserve your energy and reduce the load off your body. To-do lists are my friend. Planning out things you need and want to do can help you manage your time and use your energy wisely, which will increase your productivity. I like to make to-do lists as the one on the screen as it breaks down tasks into work tasks and personal tasks, but also helps you prioritize those tasks. What needs to be done right now? What needs to be completed today? And what don't I need to complete today? When there's so many things that need to be done, it can be overwhelming where you don't even know where to start. It can lead to increased stress and anxiety, which it makes your body, which takes toll on your body too, um, that stress and that anxiety. Using to-do lists is a great tool to help you plan and prioritize. It can also help you pace yourself throughout the day. Strategy to use and conserve your energy wisely, use your energy wisely, is scheduling in those breaks while you're planning out your task. It is not always beneficial to complete as many tasks at once. This can lead you to become very tired, which can take away from your productivity the following day. Simplifying tasks is another strategy to use your energy wisely breaking big tasks into smaller chunks and taking those breaks in between. Use tools and equipment to reduce the physical labor off of your body. So planning, prioritizing, breaks and work simplification can all lead to increased productivity and take some wear and tear off your body. Next, I will share about solutions for arthritis. Arthritis can limit productivity and take enjoyment away from completing tasks. Our hands and fingers are needed for many tasks throughout the house and farm. With arthritis, it can be difficult to weed the garden, attach the milker to the cow's udder, gripping the steering wheel on vehicles and completing everyday household chores. Solutions for arthritis entail 
ways to protect your joints and make things more grippy to reduce the pressure and strength needed from those joints. Here are three common tasks that require you to grip and hold items. On the right is a steering knob you can attach to the steering wheel. In the middle is adding more width to the wire on the five gallon bucket. The wire can lead to discomfort and increase pressure in one area while carrying the buckets. I know a strategy that I have used is using duct tape. You can also use foam or pool, no pool noodle to increase that width and that comfort when carrying those buckets. On the right is a key adapter. Keys can be difficult to grasp because they are so thin and small. So having this key adapter can make it easier to opening doors. All three of these solutions increase the width of the item, therefore reducing the distance you need to close your hand to manipulate items or objects. On this slide are additional solutions. On the right is a med grip to assist with opening medication bottles. It helps make the surface more grippy and then easier to open. Cans and jars are another common item that can be difficult to open. You can find additional tools to use for opening items in the resource slide to come. In the middle are gardening tools with the handle at an angle instead of being straight. This handle reduces the need for twisting and rotation of your wrist, further the strength needed from your wrist when using the tools in the garden. On the right, you see Grippy's support gloves. These gloves feature a strapping system that help take the pressure and tension away from your fingers, your hand, wrist, and forearm when using items. If these solutions are not available to you when holding or carrying items, try to use your larger muscles and joints when possible to really reduce the load off your smaller joints. For example, when carrying a small box, carry the weight on your forearms, or when grasping your morning cup of coffee, use one palm of your hand to help support the weight of the cup. A home ready remedy I'd like to share to reduce inflammation and pain from arthritis is how to make your own ice packs. Ice can decrease swelling and pain and instead of buying ice packs, you can make them yourself with common household items such as a sponge, coin, corn syrup, rubbing alcohol, dish, dish soap and salt. One recipe is on the screen, using one cup of rub rubbing alcohol to three cups water. You can even add in food coloring for your favorite color. When you take your breaks throughout the day or come in for lunch, that would be a great time to ice your joints and rest them. The fifth area I'd like to talk about is memory aids. There are many things to remember in a day, especially owning or working on a farm. For your own health, you need to remember to take medication as prescribed. Remember appointments, go to the doctor or the dentist. On the farm, you may need to remember when the load of hay is coming or needs to be sent out. Animals also have, um, oops, sorry about that, also have appointments, um, the shear, the vet. So it is important to remember all those to make sure you are functioning and your animals. And with age, our memory may not be the sharpest. Therefore, we need tools to help support us. So pill boxes are a great strategy to help keep your medication organized and know which one you took when. There are many different variations depending on your medication schedule. A pharmacist or occupational therapist can help select one to best fit your needs. Our phones have many different features to help us remember things if you have one. One is setting alarms to notify you, whether that's to wake up in the morning, to take your pills, or when to start getting ready for bed to ensure adequate sleep. Another feature is the reminder app. You can input information for reminders, such as when to turn the water off for the cattle so you don't have a flooded space. You can also set it up for your phone to remind you of something when you reach a certain location. The calendar app can be useful for planning and scheduling appointments. And lastly, if you have heard of Alexa or iGoogle, there are many added benefits to this technology. It is a digital voice technology system 
that talks back to you and answers your request or commands. For example, you can be like, hey Alexa, what's the weather forecast today? Or hey Alexa, add eggs to my grocery list. So these are just a few memory aids that can help assist you with completing everyday tasks. Before I conclude today's webinar, I'd like to point out a few general safety tips. You may have heard of these multiple times before, and you may even may use these yourself, but I would just like to reiterate them um, in case anyone is not aware of certain ones. So let's start with the weather. The weather has a big impact on our energy and productivity. Therefore, it's important to implement one of these as it can be beneficial. First, we will start with the upper Midwest weather. As we know, it can range from one extreme to the next, from winter and then summer. On the slide are a few gadgets to help protect you from the sun and heat. Sunglasses to protect your eyes, not only from the sun, but also debris. It is recommended to have sunscreen that is at least SPF 30 and apply it multiple times in a day if you're working out in the sun. Even wearing a wide brim hat can help shade your face. And to the right is a cooling wrap you can get wet and wear on your neck to stay cool. And you can just re-wet it to keep it going for the whole day. The type of clothing you wear can also help protect you from the sun. Jeans protect you from the sun rays, and there are also shirts that can help block out the sun they, that are also even moist wicking, wickening, which means it takes the sweat away from your skin. You can find these t-shirts at Dickies and Duluth Trading Company. Using bug spray to protect yourself from insects and ticks. There are bug repellent clothing as well you can wear um, for when you're out in the field or working in the woods. For the winter months, there are heated jackets, vests, and gloves to help you stay warm when doing outdoor chores. You can find a heated vest at Walmart for $47. Home Depot, Depot, Dick's Sporting Goods, and Cabela's are a few places you can find heated jackets. Amazon has heated gloves for about $30 you can find. During hazardous tasks, make sure that you have personal protective gear such as gloves and goggles when using tools or working with chemicals, even wearing a mask when you're laying down sawdust or in the hay barn. Using tools, when you're using tools, make sure to have cut resistant clothing. There are a few that are shown on the screen, the arm sleeve and cut resistant gloves for your protection as it's easy for a tool to slip. Two other safety tips are ensuring you have safety rails by all stairs and making sure they are sturdy and durable. Also having adequate lighting for walkways to the home and the barn. In the winter, the days are shorter, so make sure that you have that out, outdoor lighting to know where you are going and to prevent falls. My last point of today's webinar is prioritizing preventative healthcare checkups. It's important to have these checkups to catch problems and health issues early and get ahead of them. Then you can get the adequate support and services. In rural communities, it is difficult to go to the doctor's appointments or even find transportation to them. There is now a service called telehealth to save a trip for some appointments. It allows for long distance patients to connect with their doctors through technology, such, such as using video calling. There are also services out there um, through the clinics or um, resource centers in your area that can set up rides for you. My last suggestion is to always take your cell phone with you when going into the field or the barn in case of emergency. Leaving a note in the house or the barn or the bed, be on a notepad or on a whiteboard of your intended location and the time you are expected back in case something were to happen, others know where you are and they can come find you. So you can get help if you need it. Here's the slide of resources. So there's links to these resources for funding and locations to explore for more solutions to increase productivity and help you stay living on the farm. And some of the items I talked about today can be found in these links. 
There's also a PDF that you can download giving you an overview of today's webinar and links and prices to the items I shared about today. There's a screenshot of the handout that you can download and with that handout is that resource list that you can use. Here are my references. And I hope that you found value in this information I shared with you today. And you found at least one solution to implement, whether that be for yourself or somebody you know. So thank you for joining me, to, me today and listening to this webinar. And I hope you find value so you can increase your product, productivity and wellness on the farm. Thank you.